In this episode of FMG Recall Rush, you will be challenged with 20 physiology questions. You have to answer each question within 5 seconds before the correct answer and explanation is revealed. Share your score in the comment section. Let's start with the first question. Question 1. The first heart sound coincides with which cardiac cycle phase? Here are the options. A. Rapid atrial filling. B. Aortic ejection. C. Isovolumetric contraction. D. Isovolumetric relaxation. And the correct option is C. Isovolumetric contraction. Here is the explanation. The first heart sound, right? And the second heart sound. Okay. So, could you recall this whole picture? That is very, very important because now many things will be discussed in this class as well as in the next class which is related to the cardiac cycle so all these phases should be on your fingertip if i ask you what is happening what will happen to the pressure you have to answer so if you look at the first heart sound i told you that is nothing but closure of the atrioventricular valve and it is written here closure of the atrioventricular valve so you can point out that this is happening at the end of diastole or you can say this is happening at the beginning of isovolumic contraction so what should be the better answer end of diastole or end of this last rapid filling phase or beginning of isovolumic contraction. Always remember, if the ventricle is stop contracting at the end of diastole, first heart sound is not going to happen. Because I told you earlier that whenever ventricle start contraction, then and then only the blood will try to return back towards the atrium cavity and that will lead to closure of the tricuspid valves. So onset of contraction will lead to closure of AV valves right so I'm writing here so first heart sound will start at the beginning okay at starts off at the starts of isovolumic contraction question 2 which of the following statements is true about GFR here are the options a increase in sympathetic function increases GFR B. Afferent arteriolar constriction increases GFR. C. Increase in RPF increases GFR. D. Decrease in RPF increases GFR. And the correct option is C. Increase in RPF increases GFR. Here is the explanation. Constriction. Okay. And relaxation. Okay, and then efferent arteriole, efferent arteriole, constriction and relaxation. Okay, you have to answer that if there is constriction or relaxation of this afferent or efferent arteriole, what is going to happen about the renal plasma flow? What will happen? in the GFR and what will happen in filtration fraction if a filtration fraction I have told you what is filtration fraction so this table is very very important for your MCQ now think of afferent artery very very easy all of you will be answering okay so afferent artery if you cause constriction renal plasma flow will decrease proportionally your GFR will decrease because hydrostatic pressure is going to down okay going to be reduced Afferent arterial relaxation means renal plasma flow will rise, hydrostatic pressure will be increased and GFR will also proportionately rise. So, if your GFR is also rising and renal plasma flow is also rising proportionally, what will happen to filtration fraction? It will remain normal. It will remain normal in both the cases. Vasoconstrictor and various vasodilator. Okay. So, within this vasoconstrictor, you are finding out angiotensin 2, okay, sympathetic nerve and endothelium. All of them are potent vasoconstrictor, okay. They can cause constriction of the afferent as well as the efferent artery. So, what will happen to your GFR and your RPF? You are finding out that in all three cases, there will be decrease in GFR also and in all three cases, there will be reduction in the RPA, I mean renal plasma flow also. Question 3. Which of the following clotting factors participates in the extrinsic pathway of coagulation? Here are the options. 
A factor 8, B factor 7, C factor 11, D factor 9. And the correct option is B factor 7. Here is the explanation. That there is one intrinsic pathway and there is one extrinsic pathway. Look carefully. This is important. So this is intrinsic pathway of coagulation and this is extrinsic pathway of coagulation. Okay. Sometimes it is known as secondary hemostatic plug or definitive plot formation. Anyway, whenever you keep blood inside the test tube, suppose this is a test tube and you have kept blood here without any anticoagulant, we know the blood will form a clot. Which pathway of coagulation is activated here? This is the intrinsic pathway, contact pathway. This glass surface contains negative charge. In presence of this negative charge, the clotting system will be activated and the clot will form inside the test tube. But you know, between these two pathways, in vivo, inside your body, whenever vessel wall is injured, clot formation is initiated by extrinsic pathway. This is very, very important. If you look at the physiology textbook, particularly Guyton, you are not going to get it. But if you open up Harrison and other research article, it has been proved now that it is not the intrinsic pathway which is activated first time in vivo in vivo the most important pathway which is initiating your coagulation cascade which is starting your coagulation cascade that is the extrinsic pathway so this is the start point this is the starting point of coagulation so what happens whenever there is injury to the blood vessel i have told you already that collagen will be exposed not only that the sub endothelial connective tissue they are going to release certain factor and one of such factor is factor 3 which is also known as tissue factor so whenever this tissue factor is released from the sub endothelial connective tissue this tissue factor is going to combine with factor number 7 and this tissue factor factor 7 combination is going to do two important job it is directly activating the factor 10 as well as it is directly activating the factor 9 question 4 a mother complains of cramps in her breasts while breastfeeding her child. Which hormone is responsible for this? Here are the options. A. Progesterone B. Estrogen C. Prolactin D. Oxytocin And the correct option is D. Oxytocin. Here is the explanation. Only you have to remember certain functions of this oxytocin. The first one, it's primarily act on the breast and uterus. Okay, causes contraction of the myoepithelial cell lining of breast tissue. By this process, we all know that it causes ejection of the milk. Question 5. What is the affinity of carbon monoxide to hemoglobin in comparison to oxygen? Here are the options. A. 100 B. 400 C. 250 D. 150 And the correct option is C. 250. Here is the explanation. That is the carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning, very, very important cause of left sip. So, you know, carbon monoxide is 250 times more affinity towards hemoglobin. We all know that. That carbon monoxide, whenever it is present, it will bind with hemoglobin, which is 250 times faster than that of the oxygen. Question 6. A patient presents with loss of proprioception, vibration, and discriminative touch on the same side and loss of pain, temperature beginning one or two segments below the side of the lesion on the contralateral side. What is the most likely diagnosis? Here are the options. A. Weber's syndrome B. Dejerine syndrome C. brown Sequard syndrome D. Wallenberg syndrome And the correct option is C. brown Sequard syndrome. Here is the explanation. Look at this diagram here. So, brown sequard syndrome means this. Look at this gray color portion. So, this gray color portion is the area where you have given the cut. So, this portion of the spinal cord is damaged. If there is damage of the spinal cord like this, then on the side of the lesion, on the side of the lesion means same sided, there will be loss of fine touch, proprioception, vibration, tactile discrimination. This is due to loss of dorsal column pathway. And on the opposite side of the body, there will be pain, temperature, crude touch pressure. This is due to loss of damage of spinothalamic pathway. 
not only the sensory tract, the motor tract or the descending tracts will also be damaged and motor deficit damage of the corticospinal tract will also be seen. At the level of lesion, the lower motor neuron paralysis will be there. Below the level of lesion, upper motor neuron paralysis. This part you are going to understand in the next chapter when we will be discussing the descending tract. So please remember that in case of brown sequot syndrome, same sided dorsal column pathway is damaged and opposite sided, opposite sided spinal thalamus. Question 7. Which of the following conditions will shift the oxygen HB disassociation curve to the left? Here are the options. A. Increase in temperature. B. Hypercarbia. C. Alkalosis. D. Increase in 2, 3 DPG. And the correct option is C. Alkalosis. Here is the explanation. The causes of left shifting of this curve. Left shift of the OHDC curve. What are the causes of left shift? So obviously you can say that there will be decrease in temperature. Obvious. Okay. No one is going to ask you this. Decrease in temperature means you are just making opposite. Okay. Decrease in H plus ion that is the alkalosis will also cause left shifting. Right. Obviously. Number three. Decrease in PCO to hypocabnia. Great. And decrease in 2,3 dpg. Okay. Question 8. Which of the following hormones regulate serum calcium levels? Here are the options. A. Calcitonin. B. Parathyroid hormone. C. Vitamin D. D. All the above. And the correct option is D. All the above, here is the explanation. All of you know this simple thing that parathyroid hormone, vitamin D, active form of vitamin D, that is the calcitriol, that is 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol. All of you know that. And calcitonin, they are the hormone which is maintaining the calcium balance. And three organ systems. Question 9. As filtrate flows through PCT, the concentration of all of the following decreases except. Here are the options. A. Amino acid. B. Glucose. C. Chloride. D. Bicarbonate. And the correct option is C. Chloride. Here is the explanation. Proximal convoluted tubules is a little bit impermeable for chloride reabsorption. So generally sodium reabsorption occurs along with chloride. We know that. But in the proximal convoluted tubules per se, Sodium is specially reabsorbed with other kind of substances like for example glucose and all and sodium is also reabsorbed along with the bicarbonate leaving chloride in the proximal convoluted tubular lumen. So when the chloride is going to be reabsorbed, chloride is going to be reabsorbed in the later part of the proximal uh, tubule that is nothing but proximal straight tubule. Question 10. Reflex responsible for tachycardia during right atrial distension is? Here are the options. A. Bezold Gerisht reflex. B. Ban Bridge reflex. C. Cushing reflex. D. J. Reflex. And the correct option is B. Ban Bridge reflex. Here is the explanation. Of this receptor is done by stretch on right atrium. Obviously, baroreceptor means they are the stretch receptor. There should be stretch. So, if you cause this, stretch on this right atrium oval there will be activation of this receptor so i'm writing here activation will be done by stretch on right atrium oval how the stretch is going to happen stretch is only going to happen if there is increased venous return so any condition if the venous return is high to the right atrium that is going to cause a stretch on right atrium and that will activate the low pressure barrel receptor getting my point that's why this receptor are known as the volume receptor because whenever your volume is high okay suppose you have given infusion of blood to a person 500 ml blood infusion so what will happen to the venous return high this right atrium will be stretched and this low pressure barrel receptor will be activated suppose you have given certain amount of normal saline to the person again the volume will be raised and this venous return will be high this pressure will be activated that's why this pressure are known as low pressure battery receptor their volume receptor rather than mechano receptor getting my point right now if this receptor is active what is the response right so what is the response right number one activation of low pressure barrel receptor will leads to activation of one reflex activation of bain bridge reflex question 11 
In the following LV pressure volume loop diagram, point C denotes. Here are the options. A. Mitral valve closes, B. Aortic valve opens, C. Aortic valve closes, D. Mitral valve opens. And the correct option is B. Aortic valve opens. Here is the explanation. C. At point number C, the ventricular pressure is going above the aortic pressure. What is going to happen? The semilunar valve is going to open up. So, at point number C, opening of opening of semilunar valves or outing valve. Question 12. The major thyroxine binding protein is? Here are the options. A. Folistatin B. Transthyretin C. Thyroxine binding globulin D. Transferrin And the correct option is C. Thyroxine binding globulin Here is the explanation. Right. So, what are the carrier protein or what are the plasma protein? Okay. Which helps in the transport of this thyroid hormone okay so these are known as the binding protein for thyroid hormone it is also important for your mcq three binding protein name you have to remember one is the thyroid binding globulin that is the tbg important one second is the trans thyretin and third one is the albumin right so thyroid binding globulin don't confuse with the thyroglobulin right so thyroid binding globulin it uh, it is binding 67 percentage of the T4 which is entering in the blood from thyroid cell, right? So, maximum T4 remain attached with thyroid binding globulin, but maximum T3 remain attached with albumin. These two MCQ you have to remember, right? So, this thyroid binding globulin has very high affinity for thyroid hormone, okay? And it binds 67 percentage of the T4 and 46 percentage of the T3. Very, very high affinity. Question 13. Which of the following is present in skeletal muscle? Here are the options. A. GLUT4 B. GLUT5 C. GLUT7 D. GLUT2 And the correct option is A. GLUT4. Here is the explanation. GLUT4 and GLUT12. They are insulin sensitive GLUT. Where they are located? Insulin sensitive GLUT4 located at the level of muscles, hard muscles, skeletal muscles and adipose tissue. So, it is mainly at the level of muscles and fat. Question 14. Which of the following is correct regarding isovolumic relaxation? Here are the options. A. Semilunar valves close. B. Corresponds to QT interval. C. C. Wave of JVP. D. Semilunar valves open. And the correct option is A. Semilunar valves close. Here is the explanation. But after the full contraction, whenever the right ventricle is just trying to relax, immediately the ventricular chamber pressure is dropping down. This decrease in chamber pressure means the blood at the level of pulmonary artery, they are trying to fall back towards the ventricular cavity and that will lead to immediate closure of the semilunar valves. Everything, whatever I am discussing here, this closure of the semilunar valve, this part is happening within fractions of second. That means whenever the ventricle will start relaxation, immediate or the first event that is going to happen is the closure of the semilunar valve. So, I am writing here that the onset of diastole or the start of diastole means it will start with the event that is nothing but closure of semilunar valve. Question 15. Which of the following would help in explaining the mechanism of action of ANP, atrial natriuretic peptide? Here are the options. A. CAMP B. CGMP C. IIP3 DAG D. JK STAT And the correct option is B. CGMP Here is the explanation. So, we have seen guanylin cyclase receptor increases CGMP, the hormones is ANP and nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is also known as this endothelium derived relaxation factor. Question 16. If the radius of a vessel is decreased 50%, then the resistance will be increased by. Here are the options. A. 8 times B. 16 times C. 32 times D. 256 times And the correct option is B. 16 times. Here is the explanation. If your normal radius is, suppose the normal radius is 1 R, right? 
so after 50 percent decrement means obvious thing is that 50 percent decrement means now the radius is half of the r so obviously if i want to calculate how much resistance is going to change so this is inversely proportionate to r to the power 4 so i'm writing this half r to the power 4 so this is nothing but increment of resistance that is 16 times than that of the normal resistance getting my point so this way you have to calculate that how much change of resistance is going question 17 renin is secreted by here are the options a tubular cells b macula densa c jg cells d all of the above and the correct option is c jg cells here is the explanation what JG cell contain? JG cell contain it contain granules and those granules contain renin. So basically, I am saying if there is increase in CMP, it's a stimulus for secretion of renin. It's a stimulus for secretion of renin. Okay, okay. So I'll write down this renin with a different color so that you remember it better, right? So renin. Okay. So CMP is a stimulus for question eighteen. Which of the following hormone is inhibited by an active form of 1,25-OH to D? Here are the options. A. Thyroxine, B. Parathyroid hormone, C. Insulin, D. Calcitonin and the correct option is B. Parathyroid hormone. Here is the explanation. Stimulus for parathyroid hormone secretion. Second one is decrease in plasma magnesium level but note down. On the other side also, hypomagnesium is written. So, if the magnesium level is decreased and that decreases mild decrease, mild hypomagnesemia, it is a stimulus for parathyroid hormone secretion. But if there is a severe hypomagnesemia, it's an inhibitor of parathyroid secretion. Not only that, combined deficiency of magnesium and calcium is also an inhibitor for parathyroid hormone secretion please please note down this important point combined magnesium calcium is division parathyroid hormone is not going to be secreted severe magnesium division parathyroid hormone is not going to be secreted but hypocalcemia alone or mild magnesium deficiency both are stimulus for parathyroid hormone secretion third one hyperphosphatemia phosphate level is very very high and catecholamines all of them are stimulus for parathyroid hormone secretion Vitamin D, active form of vitamin D is an inhibitor of parathyroid hormone secretion. So, whenever your vitamin D is very high in the blood, your calcium will be adequate because you are going to absorb more calcium from the blood. In that cases, parathyroid hormone will be directly suppressed by this active vitamin D hormone, right? So, this is the different types of stimulus. Question 19. Atrial depolarization originates in? Here are the options. A. S. A. Node. B. A. V. Node, C. Endocardian, D. Epicardian, and the correct option is A. S. A. Node. Here is the explanation. For the atrial depolarization, there is no problem because atrial depolarization start at the level of S. A. Node and atrial repolarization also start near the S. A. Node. Both are the same. Question 20. Which of the following receptors mediate stretch reflex? Here are the options. A. Golgi tendon organ B. Merkel's disc C. Muscle spindle D. Meissner's corpuscles And the correct option is C. Muscle spindle Here is the explanation. 1A fiber will be activated. When it will be activated? 1A fiber is connected with the muscle spindle and muscle spindle detect the increased length of the muscle. Now you try to understand. Suppose I am suddenly increasing the length of this muscle like this suddenly i am increasing the length of the muscle like this i am stretching this muscle i am stretching this muscle increasing the length of the muscle what happens whenever you increase the length of the muscle muscle spindle length will also increased because it is parallel to the muscle fiber so increase in the length of the muscle spindle will also occur whenever there is increase in length of the muscle spindle increase in length of the muscle spindle muscle spindle will be activated and muscle spindle activation means which neuron will be activated 1a so i can understand like this that you stretch the muscle okay you stretch the muscle 
there will be stretch on muscles next subject is a crucial band of medicine that is pharmacology join us tomorrow for 25 pyqs of pharma that can be crucial for the upcoming fmg do like and subscribe if you learned something new today see you tomorrow